to Weymouth where an author has gone one step further than illustrating his book to bring it to life. Liam Finlay has created a set of aromas to accompany his new book, The Doom Town Dummies. We will talk to Liam in just a mo. But first, some of the Weymouth brownies have been trying out the smells in Liam's book for us. Welcome to the olfactory factory, where the smells of your sweetest dreams and most rancid nightmares are created. Sick. Like sweat and socks. Something's gone off. <laughs> Have you ever smelt a ghost? Most people haven't, but Colette Planchette has. The Doomtown Dummies is a spooky story set in a fantasy world. The characters, of course, are made up, but the smells, they're real. Oh, like a lavender soap. Is it nice? Yes. Herbs. Potatoes? Spinach. Mm. In Weymouth, the first Radipole brownies are trying out the smells. Soap. It smells like lettuce. Dishwasher. Kind of weirdly chocolatey. The chocolatey smell was a good one because this is based on the bakeries in Weymouth. It's kind of a toffee-ish smell. Liam Findlay wrote the book and created the aromas to go with it. This is the smell of the snouted snatcher, which has a kind of horrible fishy whiff. I can smell it now, actually. Um, that's disgusting. <laughs> toilet okay. water, as yeah, the brownies might say. That's bad. Is there a nice one? Um, yeah, we've got um, a kind of lovely floral smell. I reference the smells, okay. the flowers at Radipole Gardens for that one. Yeah. It's a bit of a fresher one. So some are bad, some are good, and they accompany the book. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to um, encourage readers to think about the world from the perspective of their nose a bit more. That was kind of one of my main aims with the book. Lots of it's kind of personal memories that I have of Weymouth. For example, going to Noth Fort or the old Time Walk attraction where they had loads of creepy dummies that would kind of stare at you. And as a child, I would kind of, uh, I was a bit nervous that they might come alive at night and come to my house. When the pair find themselves in a village of eerie shop window dummies, the stench of danger becomes ever closer. Someone or something is watching. Children do like horrible things, don't they? Yeah, and I, I've kind of gone all out with that. <laughs> so which ones do you like the best, the good ones or the bad ones? Good! The, good the bad ones, because it's just fun smelling them. Onions. Mm, smells like poo. My brother's shoes. Farts. And there you have it, out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> Honestly, I use language like that. I get told off, but the brownies say it, and it's fine. Uh, that is uh, Weymouth Brownies enjoying Liam Finley's book. I'm pleased to say that Liam joins me on the line now. Hello, Liam. Nice to talk to you again. We haven't spoken for, uh, for a few years. Yeah, yeah, we have discussed our smells <laughs> in the past. <laughs> so how does this work then? I'm not, not sh sure that I'm clear. This isn't like a sc sc scratch and sniff. Do, do, I mean, do you have to be there providing these smells to go with the book so you're at readings with it? Is that is that it? Yeah, well, uh, the smells come in little handheld cubes that you can sniff. Um, so uh, these are available to buy on my website, but also I'm taking them... Um, to school visits and I'm I'm doing a workshop at Weymouth Library on Thursday so I'll take them there um, so it's a mixture and the right. hope is that people it's almost like an olfactory illustration so people can have a sniff as they're reading and smell the world that's on the page that's wonderful and, and this kind of feeds in to I, I, th I hope I'm right in kind of joining these lines together you were diagnosed with alkalasia about five or six years ago, which is it affects how you eat. And for you, smell is incredibly important. Is that, that fair to say? Yeah. Um, so alkalasia is a very rare condition where your food pipe just stops working and the food won't go down. Um, and thankfully, now I've had um, some wonderful surgery um, at Dorchester Hospital, um, which helps me eat again. But at the time because I couldn't eat and I could hardly drink as well. There were only kind of drops that would go through to my stomach. Um, I lost two stone and I was very weak. Um, so I started writing this book um, and it was a nice kind of means of escapism because I was writing about this adventure story and I could kind of take myself 
out of the home. Um, and also I started thinking about um, my local landscape um, and the because I was so interested in smells because that's what my work is about. Um, I was kind of thinking about the smells of the, the nearby gardens and the harbour and kind of tying them into the story. And yeah. it was a kind of nice way of getting through the ordeal. Uh, at the time. Is it a leap to think as well that if you aren't eating and then, you know, you get a waft of the hospital canteen or whatever it might be all of a sudden your your olfactory sense is coming to life even more even though you were already working in that kind of aroma because we spoke i should, should be clear we spoke because you were making smells for theme parks weren't you yeah um yeah so i work for a company called aroma prime that makes smells for uh, theme parks and museums and care homes um so for example right now at halloween there are lots of scare mazes full of the likes of rotting flesh and <laughs> poo and vomit stinks <laughs> to make people feel uncomfortable. Great, yeah. Thanks, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so when... Um, I suppose it's almost like um, sometimes if you uh, kind of cover your eyes and you sniff something, the smells come across a bit more powerfully. And I suppose in a way, not being able to eat and... Um, you, you kind of, I wasn't accessing taste so much yeah. and uh, smells are a nice kind of way to uh, kind of keep the brain going and, uh, like I say, a bit of escapism. Sure. Um, and somebody with a less twisted, twisted mind, I'm sure, would have written a book filled of, you know, candy floss and, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, hot dog smells or whatever, and here you are with slime and stench and other things too. Well, um, look, it sounds terrific. Uh, Liam R. Findlay.com to find out more. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Yes. The Doom Town Dummies, it's called. Uh, really great to see you this morning. Uh, uh, Liam, uh, Wayne's author, Liam Findlay, with us live on BBC Radio Sonance Dorset Breakfast.